Hey, I'm Rob Van Leeshout with Quail Forever, and today I'm gonna to show you how to make one of my favorite wintertime recipes, Upland Pot Pie. With this recipe, you can be as simple as you want, or you can go all out with this style of comfort food. What you'll need are at least four pheasant breasts, and to season the pheasant, we're gonna use some salt, pepper, thyme, and oregano. We're not gonna put too much on here right now because more will get added later. And some ground sage. And then we gotta add some olive oil. Kinda like to rub that in there just so it gets a real nice sear when it hits the pan. So we put the cast iron on the stove, turn it up to about medium heat. Gonna put some more olive oil in the pan just to get it to warm up. And then once we're ready, we're gonna throw the meat in. Pan's all heated up, time to throw these on the cast iron. Now since we're gonna be baking this all, the goal isn't to get it cooked all the way through, it's just to get a nice sear on each side. You'll know if you've got a breast shot bird, but slicing it up extra thin like this, it just kinda helps prevent any uh, lead in your pie, if you know what I'm saying. All right, we've got the pheasant all diced, ripped up apart. I'm just gonna put it in this bowl here, and we're gonna set that aside. Next, chop up the celery, onion, carrots, good for the eyes. Potatoes. All right, all set with that. And now everything is gonna be combined into the filler pot. So we're gonna throw this on the stove, warm it up, Put some butter down. For this, half stick of butter going in. You want the butter to brown but not burn on the edges. We'll add in the chopped onions, mix in some salt and pepper. If you start to see some brown on the onions, that's not a good sign. You kind of want it to retain that translucent look to it. After stirring for just a couple minutes, Dump the rest in, including the carrots. Next up, stock. Now you're gonna wanna pour, I probably got about four cups here. You're gonna wanna pour about half of it in there. Quarter cup of flour. Half a cup of milk, for starters. As you're making your filling for your pie, feel free to reduce or add the amount of flour, cream, or broth that you put into it. Just be careful with the amount of flour you put in. Make sure you continue to stir it around, otherwise it'll kinda form into little clumps and uh, might burn it a little bit. Now that we've got the consistency that we want, we're gonna add the remainder of the vegetables. Mushrooms, corn, peas. Stir that all around there. Last thing to add to the pot, chopped pheasant. And 
You want to really stir it around, mix it in. You don't want there to be any layers in your fillings. We're going to put just a dusting of the sage on top. And I'm a real fan of thyme, so we're going to we're going to put a lot of that down in there. So what we've done up to this point is we diced up our vegetables, spices, and meat, added it to this filler pot. Everything is mixed in and fixed to our liking, consistency for a good pie filling. We're going to cover this, set it aside, and get to work on our pie dough. This cast iron pie here has no layer underneath, but we are going to put one layer of dough on top. And this one right here in this square receptacle, we've got one layer of dough underneath, and then once we put our filling down, we're going to put another layer on top. Just unraveling the store-bought pie crust. And now this is where it gets tricky because you don't want to lay it too far to the side. You kind of want to start to drag it over top, center it, and just plop it on down. It's a, it's a game of finesse. There go. It's starting to look a little bit more like a pie to you folks. And what I like to do to kind of tuck it in there, is I like to kind of ring it down around the cast iron, kind of crimp it, just to kind of get it started. Now it's real important to put some vents in. Go all the way through. Do at least three. If you're real artistic, you could, I don't know, sign your name on it if you want. And this one's good for the oven. And for this one, you can get a little fancier. Pat that all out, getting a little even. I'm going to cut. You're going to want to make sure that it's awful even on top here. You can have a mound in the middle, kind of like our other one here. And what we got here are 10 slices. And we're just going to kind of lay five of them off to the side here. And we're going to lay these just over top. We're going to drop two of them over top. And then we're going to lay another one on top. We're going to bring these back. We're going to drop these down over top. Make sure you crimp the edges. And since this one's kind of exposed on this side, we don't have to worry about any vents. These are ready for the oven. We're going to bake them in there for 30 minutes at 400 degrees. Now let's step outside for a little habitat tip. While the Upland pot pie is baking in there, I thought I would take this opportunity to briefly talk to you guys about one of our management techniques, prescribed fire. Why fire? For cattle operations, there are reasonings behind the nutritional benefits, such as improved forage quality and a more diverse selection of grasses. But how does it benefit the wildlife? Can't the same results be accomplished through a combination of haying, grazing, or spraying the weeds? It really depends on what your property goals are. So, let's take a look at one. Here we are at a CRP that is due for a burn later this year. It's been about five years since this property has seen any sort of management work done to it, and it desperately needs it. Now, this is designated as brood rearing cover for upland birds. 
So kind of for a test, that's about the size of a quail chick. Now imagine this quail chick trying to navigate around a portion of this field. This little guy is going to have an extremely difficult time going from point A to point B only a few yards away. Tripping over all this old growth and thatch covering the ground. This cover will either discourage any sort of movement, leaving these birds prone to predators, both up in the air, and fur bearers such as raccoons and coyotes, which tend to burrow deep in the grasses. Or, when being chased or forced to move, these chicks will expel more energy than they consume and fail to survive. As a comparison site, this is a field that was burned last fall. It's in the same exact practice as that field I showed you earlier. And as you can tell, a lot of the vegetation has been removed and it didn't really have a lot of time to grow during the dormant season. But the thatch layer that was problematic to those upland chicks is gone. The bare ground plays into the mobility factor of these chicks. They'll be able to hide, take cover, and nest up where the grasses are thickest, near drainage ditches, shrub thickets, or in crops with cover, just adjacent to this field. But when it comes time to feed, they'll find these sites that produce fleshy insects in the warm summer heat, giving them energy and promoting growth moving later into the year. Whether you want to see more wildlife on your property or you're facing vegetative issues such as tree encroachment and invasive grasses, prescribed fire can be an excellent tool to add to your management plan. Contact a wildlife biologist for more information. Thanks for joining me for that habitat tip. It's time to get these out of the oven. And we gotta let these set and cool for about five to 10 minutes, and then we get to dig in. I'm gonna just kinda cut this out real fine. And it's such a hearty meal. It's got all the veggies in the world that you need. You don't need to eat a salad with it or anything. Upland pot pie.